episode number 312 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. My guest today is Sonia Rebus. Sonia is a sought-after LA-based fertility coach and a mom of three. In her last 15 plus years, she has successfully coached thousands of couples struggling to conceive. Her highly personalized, transformational, and integrative lifestyle-based approach, which covers everything from nutrition to well-being, makes her an expert guide in her client's path towards parenthood. She helps couples one-on-one in groups and in collaboration with fertility clinics around the world in order to help patients boost their fertility from every possible angle and maximize their chances of conceiving both naturally and through IVF. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. Welcome to the podcast, Sonia. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes, I would love for you to share your story of how you got into this work that you do. Okay. Yeah, let's go for it. So I always say, sometimes you find things in life, sometimes things find you. Uh, In my case, fertility found me. So in my previous life, as I like to call it, um, I was marketing executive and director for multinationals. And then I found yoga. And um, I fell in love with hot yoga at the time, to the point that I left my job and I went travel the world. Um, and I created one of the first online yoga studios in the world. Oh, cool. And as I was doing that, yeah, and as I was doing that, occasionally I was also teaching private sessions. And um, I was living in Boston at that time, and I had a client who was originally from India, and she was my yoga student, and she was great. And then she was relocated back to India. And then she called me and she said, hey, my OBGYN says I'm not going to be able to have children and I'm devastated. And I was like, wow. And she said, you're the only person I trust. And I was like, well, wait a second. Like, I'm not a fertility person, you know, like I'm into healthy lifestyle. I'm a yoga instructor. I, I know a thing or two about these things because I follow it, but not fertility. And she said, Sonia, you're the only person I trust. Wow. So this is 15 years ago. So I teamed up with my mother, who's a traditional Chinese doctor in Spain. And uh, we teamed up together and we put together a holistic program that was the very, very first version of what I do today. Um, And, you know, we created meditation videos, yoga videos, lots of herbs, supplements, a diet, um, lots of mindset tools and things like that. So things that we were coming up with, and I did a lot of research as well to understand, you know, I'm a research nerd. So to understand what works, what's proven, etc. So we created the first version for her and uh, her labs improved a lot and she got pregnant naturally. So her OBGYN in India started referring people my way. So yeah, the rest is history. So I started informally um, doing fertility coaching without being certified. Um, My mom was helping me, but at some point my mom said, you know, I have a full practice in Spain. I think it's time for you to go on your own. So this was 15 years ago. So obviously, fast forward, I got certified. Uh, I became a health coach and I got a lot of certificates in medicine and women's health and uh, a lot more. And then I started practicing fertility coaching 15 years ago. Then I had three kids of my own. So I perfected my method with obviously my own experience. And um, yeah, by now we've helped make more than a thousand babies. Amazing. That's incredible. So cool. Yeah. So what are some of the common things that you see when people come to you for fertility? Like some of the common stories that people share on their journey? I know that's a big question, but whatever comes first. <laughs> totally. So the what I wish I would see First, I'm going to tell you what I wish and then the reality is because sometimes it helps understand. What I wish I would see is I would I wish I would see more people come earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I always use the analogy of a wedding, you know, the same way as you prepare for a wedding. 
And if you think I'm going to get married, you don't just show up in your sweatpants at your wedding, right? You prepare, you get a dress, you prepare a ceremony, you know, you get the whole thing going. I wish it would be the same for having a baby because there's a lot of things that if we would prepare in advance, there wouldn't be so many headaches and so many heartaches. Now, the reality is that I see people when they're on the desperate side, when they've been Mm -hmm. trying for a while and it has the journeys longer than they anticipated, or when they've been told IVF is their only option, or even worse, when they've tried IVF or IUI and it didn't work, and then they come to me as a better alternative, more empowered version to get pregnant. And you say you had mentioned that you think that many times, in many cases, people don't really need IVF. What has your experience been with that? So statistically, 50% of IVF cases are not needed. So that right there tells you what happens, right? So a lot of people are thrown into IVF because that's the nature of the Western medical approach to fertility. Um, in some cases it works, in many cases it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, most of the times it's because the person was unprepared or the couple was unprepared Mm -hmm. or what, because it was not needed. So I always say, I always use the analogy of a car. Mm -hmm. So if your car doesn't work, what do you do? You take it to the mechanic and the mechanic tries to jumpstart the battery. So that's IVF. IVF is jumpstarting your system. You might or might not be ready for it. It might or it might not work. But the process is very expensive, very invasive, and it has side effects potentially for the rest of your life. So it's not something to take lightly. It's not like, hey, I'm going to get my whatever. It's not a, It's not like I'm going to get my teeth cleaned. No, it's an invasive thing. So what I say is, going back to the analogy of the car, um, if your car doesn't work, you can take it to the mechanic, you can open the motor and have a look clean whatever needs to be clean, repair whatever needs to be repaired so that when you try to switch it on, it will switch on without being jump-started. It will switch on naturally. So this is what we do here. And I always say to people, hey, if down the line it hasn't happened naturally and you want to continue trying IVF, by that time you'll be ready. Look, I always always go back to statistics. IVF without preparation is about a 20% success rate. IVF with the proper preparation and optimizing your system is an 85 success rate. So if you're going to throw yourself into this process, at least prepare yourself so you can optimize your chances of success. And what are some of the things that you see that people need when they come to you? Like, what are some of the more common things that you see? So we here, we leave no stone unturned because... Everybody needs a combination of factors and everybody is really different. So for some people, it's more the physical side. For other people, it's more the mental, the past traumas, the blockages, um, the limiting beliefs energetically. So we leave no stone unturned. We cover everything from the physical layer, the mental, the emotional, the energetic, and the spiritual layer. So we have a holistic approach to fertility, which I love. Your podcast is wholesome Mm -hmm. because we use that word all the time as well. Yes, for sure. I mean, there's so many different layers. Um, Some of the things that I personally see is a lot of people are given diagnosis and, and I guess in the journey, it's very easy to get a lot of limiting labels thrown at you. And I really say thrown at you. I mean, I was one of them. I had, um, you know, my own issues with my menstrual cycle growing up, but not realizing that I had other option. And I think that a lot of times is that people don't realize that they have options and they don't realize or aren't really told along the way, unless they find the right person, that there are alternatives and things that they could do to improve their state. I think that that was, that's the biggest hurdle is just really not even knowing anything else exists. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So a lot of the things we do is education because people have Obviously, you don't know, and people go to Dr. Google, which is probably the last thing you should be doing because it's nerve-wracking. So we do a lot of education, but we step a lot into action. We're very, very action and results-oriented. 
I always say to my clients, we are here for transformation. And if we are here for transformation, we need to combine information plus action. So everything we offer here is very, very action oriented, whether it's on the diet side and we roll up our sleeves and we create personalized diets for our clients. Um, But also, for example, on the movement side, we give them a lot of tools. Like it's not just, oh, go move and go exercise, but we give them a lot of exercise videos, yoga videos, strength training, like all the tools they can actually go and implement with real actionables. And when you talked about percentage, you know, of improvement for IVF, if you're prepared versus not prepared, is that um, anything specific to like your work or something that you've seen? Like, how how do you base that? Yeah. So that's kind of like statistics that we draw in our practice. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that IVF is around a 20% success rate is known. That's not something that I've decided. That's something it's published. Um. Obviously, it depends on the age brackets and all that, but we can call it, you know, on average. Um, And then what I see is I have a lot of people who've tried IVF and they come my way after a number of failed rounds of IVF. Mm -hmm. And then we can like draw statistics of like, okay, from these people, how many people then have a successful IVF after? And it's about 85%. That's awesome. It's good to know. I'm curious because I'm a little bit of a numbers nerd myself (laughs) and I like to kind of get like a data and I, and I love hearing just things even with like studies. And so it kind of jogged my curiosity. That's awesome. And I agree. I, you know, I do Chinese medicine. I also do fertility coaching, but ultimately when you do make these changes in your lifestyle, you really can optimize a lot of your well being. but it's almost like you're the way I see it is you're triggering anti-aging because that's really what fertility is. It's kind of like anti-aging treatment. Right. If you yes. think about it, it's the same thing. It's just that really optimizing your health, optimizing your mitochondria and your body's energy so that it's able to produce, reproduce. But that's ultimately like turning back the clock, which we can actually do. That's something that you can actually do with lifestyle which is why I find it so empowering in general. I find that a lot of people also feel that it's not just empowering for conceiving, but it's empowering as they get older as well. Yes. Yes, exactly. So what we do here is reverse the effects of oxidative stress. So as you say, it's kind of like the anti-aging version of fertility. And what are some of the things that you find or some of the ways you approach that just for people listening that are curious, like, cause some people know, you know, that that can impact egg quality as we age, oxidative stress gets higher, but some people might not, you know, it might be like new terms if they're just listening to this now and they're first starting this journey. So let's kind of break it down for the listeners if they're hearing this and why it's so impactful for not just egg quality, but for sperm quality as well. Yes. There's a massive difference, though. So obviously, as you age, oxidative stress happens. It's the byproduct of being alive. Um, It's funny because my dad always said, you know, when my dad drinks or something and I say, hey, dad, this kills you. He says, you know what? Living kills me. (laughs) Being Mm -hmm. alive means that you are subject to the process of oxidative stress. Everybody's subject to that. Now, there's a difference between egg and sperm. Eggs, you are born with your set of eggs. I cannot take out your eggs and replace them. They are there. We can do a lot of things to optimize their functioning, optimize their quality, as you said, optimize the mitochondria um, and, and make them fitter and stronger and better working, but they're the same. Now, sperm on the other side is regenerated all the time. The sperm that's ejaculated today is not the sperm that will be ejaculated tomorrow or in three weeks. Um, That's why it's a lot easier. In my experience, it's a lot easier to improve sperm quality than egg quality. But we can work on both and we definitely have, you know, great success on both. But every time that I get a couple that have a combination of factors, I always look at the male and I say, okay, you're on the lucky side. If you do this program, I can guarantee for sure that your sperm will improve no matter what. Amazing. So let's talk about the egg quality and how oxidative stress impacts the egg quality. 
Okay, and like yeah. what people can do, generally speaking, to improve their quality of eggs. Okay, great. So how it impacts egg quality is, um, well, it's in a number of ways, but primarily two very strong ways. One of them is genetically. It affects the DNA structure, the DNA structure of your cells, including the DNA structure of your eggs. So when your eggs produce embryos, it might be that the embryos are genetically not normal. So that's when we see genetic things happen, even not viable. So that's when things that happen. The other thing that is very visible that happens is that the mitochondria, which is the energy factories of the cells, get affected. So they're not as strong. This is why we recommend supplements like Co- like CoQ10, for example, to boost the functioning of the mitochondria. Right. Now, what do we do holistically in this program to optimize that quality? It's one of my favorite topics in the world. Thanks for asking me that. So it's a holistic approach. Okay. So we boost fertility. We boost egg quality from every possible angle, everything lifestyle-based, and everything is research-based here. So everything we offer here has been proven at some point by research papers. Mm -hmm. So we work on 15 factors. So my program is 15 modules plus a bonus module. That's male factor. So for 15 modules, we deep dive into 15 areas of your lifestyle that need to be optimized because they're strictly related to fertility. So if you optimize those areas of your lifestyle, you are boosting your fertility and your egg quality no matter what. And those are, there's a physical layer, there's a mental layer, emotional layer, energetic layer, and spiritual layer. So we combine things like diet, hydration, supplements, weight management, um, movement. We talk about inner dialogue, emotions, cortisol, stress, everything that happens related to your stress hormones, sleep patterns, circadian rhythms, your relationships, your toxic relationships, your conflict, your libido, your sex drive, your relationship, your connection to your partner, environmental toxins, empowerment, your connection to your inner power, limiting beliefs, empowering self-affirmations, meditations, um, cycle syncing. We also do sit cycling, um, and then connecting to your groove. So I think it's very important, and that's not something we never talk about, which is like I can throw a lot of things at you, but if we don't find your version of what I'm talking about, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's sure. why it's very important, the concept of bio-individuality, which means a person's food is another person's poison. 100%. Right? So, Right. And everything needs to be personalized to you because we are here to deliver results for you, not for your neighbor. Oh, my so God. So true. Your neighbor, your <laughs> might be very different. Some people have night shifts. Some people have preferences of food. Some people have cravings. Some people turn to different things to deal with emotions. Some people have past trauma. Most of us like all this is very, very personal. So what I'm very fascinated about and obsessed about is how do we go in the trenches with our clients? How do we help them land all the recommendations into their real life so that we can truly move the needle for them? Yeah, I love that. It's so true because that is something that I often see is, especially when they first come to us, because they're like, oh, you know, my best friend, she also struggled with fertility, she tried this herb and it helped her and I wanted to try it too. Or somebody else tried DHEA, which is a hormone and I want to try it too. And, and it is a hormone and it is something that I always recommend. Never take anything like that unless you get tested and see what's going on in your body. Because for one person, it could be amazing. It could be a game changer. But if your body has a completely different makeup, and in balance of hormones, it can actually be detrimental. So I'm really glad that you brought that up because everybody's so unique. We literally are like our bodies are like fingerprints. And I love that saying one man's food is another man's poison. It's 100% true. Like somebody can thrive. Actually, dairy has been shown to help with many women who are trying to conceive full fat. It's been shown in studies I'm also a nerd with that. Like, I love that because it's true. Like, then you could see, okay, 
for the majority, yeah, it can actually be really beneficial. However, if you have a dairy sensitivity or an allergy or it causes more inflammation, or as in Chinese medicine, we look at like dampness, which is an element. I'm sure your mom has taught you about that. Yeah. Uh, then if that's the case, that would not be great for exactly. that particular person. So, so it's so important for people to realize that Yes, you know, you listen to podcasts and you read about it and you go down like Dr. Google, like as you said, and you can learn a lot of things. However, your body is so unique and your body needs a customized plan. Yes, absolutely. And even a step further, your body today is different than your body in two weeks. Yes, because you are true. a woman and, uh, you are in the waves of your menstrual cycle. So if you're ovulating today, you'll feel strong, you'll feel energetic, you'll feel social. Um, and in two weeks, as you're about to menstruate, you'll feel like a completely different person. And that's something I like to talk about because I get a lot of men kind of like asking me how true this is. How is PMS real? Is she making it up? Is, you know... They, they just because they're flat they don't understand the fluctuations of hormones and i do a lot of education on that on cycle thinking how this is real and how life is a lot easier if you surf the waves of your cycle instead of fighting it or instead of just acting as if it doesn't exist totally i call that just kind of personal flow you know in chinese medicine we do a lot of like physical flow with the meridians and our chi but when we have flow in our life, that's really what it looks like. It's really understanding, not fighting, kind of going with that, riding those waves. So totally. yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. And so what are some of the, I love talking also about the mind and how stress can impact our bodies. I understand this from a Chinese medicine perspective. I also, we know that when we're in fight or flight, uh, basically the energy rich blood rich areas are going to be our arms and legs or limbs so that we can either fight or run mm -hmm. and it takes it away from our vital organs and including the uterus. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how stress can impact fertility and why it's so important to address that aspect of ourselves. Okay. I love, this is one of my favorite topics. So when I, when it comes to stress, I always say there's two kinds of stress. There's useful stress and there's chronic stress, which is not useful. So stress is a natural response and it's actually a very useful response to danger and to situations in life that need for you to be pumped with certain hormones, cortisol, adrenaline to react. Like if there's a lion about to chase me, I need to experience stress so that I can react and save my life, right? I need to run or hide or something, right? So that's useful. And in certain situations in life, that's very useful. Now, we have in our modern society normalized a stressful feeling to the point that because we have deadlines, we have infertility problems, we have a lot of things going on, our body is constantly in alert as if a lion's about to chase me every five minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's called chronic stress. And that is highly inflammatory. So if you feel you're having that, which you probably are because we pretty much all have that, you need to find ways to release that cortisol, you know, because otherwise we have what we call a cortisol intoxication or a cortisol, a cortisol overload. And cortisol is highly inflammatory, even excess. So you need to find ways to release it. And this is where we step into action. So for me, for example, I need to go work out to release stress. If I don't move, I can meditate and things like that, but it's not going to be the same as sweating it out. So I do hot yoga. Hot yoga. I love thing. hot yoga. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, for other people, it's different. You know, there's a lot of different ways. So if, if workout works for you, great. Meditation also works for a lot of people. And if you're not meditating, I get a lot of people tell me, oh, that's not for me. Give it a chance because meditation does not need to be a full hour in Tibet. It can be 10 minutes, five minutes sitting on your bed and just like focus on your breath, 
diaphragmatic breathing. As you inhale, you in, you expand your belly. As you exhale, you contract your belly and you connect to your breath. And that in itself sends your brain the signal of I am safe and you can activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. And that's where your reproductive function thrives. Yes. If, however, you're yeah. activating your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, then your reproductive function won't be favorized because your body will only favorize the functions that are essential for survival. Absolutely. So waste another way that I always tell people to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, so to release stress, is hugging. Hugging a long hug also does that, also sends that signal to your brain of I am safe, I escaped the lion, everything's good. So that also works really well. Um, and also hot and cold therapy. So if you're stressed and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with myself, go take a cold shower or a hot shower or combine both or take ice water or make yourself a hot tea. Like hot and cold therapy are very good as a way to release cortisol as well. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, the cold plunges, there's, I, I'm trying to look into that as far as fertility goes, possibly might be good for men, but I'm not sure about women quite yet trying to do the research on that. But I do agree. Maybe it's kind of like that initial kind of shift from one state to another that sort of breaks up the stagnation. Yeah, it's the shocker. It's the I, shock, I yeah. Knew, yeah, I knew you were going to say that because obviously in the training, in the traditional uh, Chinese medicine, um, we don't want to be cold. Yes. And I, will, I, I grew up this way. You always want to be on the warmer side. I remember when my mom did her internship in Beijing, it was super hot, like 110 degrees. And everybody was drinking hot tea 24-7. And she was like calling me like, I don't know what I can do. It's like holy <laughs> hot. Um, but yeah. yeah, I know very well that that's a tradition. I grew up with that. Um, and for me, cold uh, water is a problem too. But what I do is I, I shock my system and I do hot, cold, hot, cold. And I always end with hot because I, I cannot walk out of my shower feeling cold. Yes. Um, but I do and also the shower is not as extreme as some of these cold plunges. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I do think the combination, though, is very, very interesting. But as right. we said, hey, it's like the yin and yang. Out. We're kind of forcing a yin and yang balance in some exactly. way. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, try it out. Like I always say to people, don't take my word for anything. Everything we talk about, try it out for yourself and see it in your own body, how it yeah. feels. That's right. Find your own version. Totally. And I think that um, our bodies are just so intelligent and we're made of this intelligence that, and it always speaks to us. It speaks mm -hmm. to us with food. It will guide you if you're really connecting with it, which is why I love meditation so much because it really brings us an awareness to that communication. It bridges, it almost like builds this neuron, this connection between us and our bodies that maybe we've ignored for so long and sort of forgot really was there. That's why mm -hmm. I love mindfulness. But also what I love about really becoming mindful and meditation is it teaches us to become aware of our body. So we can catch ourselves if we're getting too stressed out about certain things, we can catch ourselves and realize, hey, I'm not actually in danger right now. And realize that and that mindfulness is what is kind of on guard to check, you know, your situation. Absolutely. I love that you're saying that. I love mindfulness. In my program, we call it heartfulness, actually, oh, because it's all the mindfulness uh, principles of being aware of, your, of what you're doing, of your surroundings, being very much there. But I call it heartfulness because I like to shift the, the focus from here because we spend so much time here to here. How yes. does it feel? How does it feel to be here now? Okay, you're noticing everything mindfulness and the added touch of the heart, the feeling, the savoring. I feel we need more savoring and we need to be more connected to that concept of savoring in life. And that's one of the things that I preach all the time. 
I love that because it's almost like bringing romance back into life, right? I love that. Yeah. Because it's like those moments, just savoring those moments and and bring more romance, which really, what does that do? It's like infusing meaning into the moment. And there's more meaning, there's more richness. And if you think about just kind of how we used to live, I think of like, I don't know, a street in Paris where people are just sitting a lot longer to talk and eat and take their time and really tasting everything. And I think that when you're doing that, you're really infusing kind of that chi life force energy into your moments in life, which ultimately I think impact your body. Yes. And fertility is about that. Fertility, the concept for me of fertility, the essence of boosting fertility is adding that boost of life into your life. More grace, more flow, more enjoying, more savoring, more being here, more embracing, empowering yourself. Yeah, I love that. That's so true. I mean, really, ultimately, that's it's just a richness. It's kind of like living in an energy rich state, which ultimately, I mean, that's it's kind of like just energy being really efficient and thriving through your body. And that's when your cup overflows you're able to bring more life forth. And that's, yeah. Also, I think that also when you're working in this work, you start to see patterns and you mm-hmm. start to see how clearly what's crazy about it is that in order to reproduce, we need all this energy, but like the fertility journey on its own can be so taxing and draining, which is why it's important to have somebody who understands it to guide you and to help you with that um, ultimately, and, or even a community or friends or connecting with others going through it, because I think that helps as well. It's having that sense of support. Absolutely. Absolutely. You don't need to go through this alone. I think that some things in life are meant for you to do alone. Some things are not. And fertility is definitely not one of them. Yeah. I am always shocked when I read statistics that about 63% of women with fertility problems never talk about it with anyone. That's it sad. totally breaks my heart. Yeah, I see it too. I mean, people, when they first come to my office, they're like, they feel so relieved. They're like, I can't really talk about this. Even with my husband, sometimes they'll say. Totally. Yeah, totally. They're so scared of ruining their marriage if they talk about it. And um, in my program, we combine private coaching with group coaching. And I have a lot of people at the beginning of the program who are unsure about the group coaching at the beginning. And they're like, I'm not sure, you know, it's kind of private. Then they give it a go. And then by the end of the program, when they give me feedbacks, I always ask for feedback at the end. They say, oh, my God, the group sessions were the best. It's a group hug. They call it a group hug. Yeah. And feeling seen, feeling validated by women who are in the same season in life is so, so therapeutic. Oh my God. Yes. I've seen the same thing. And I've seen people in the programs connecting and having lifelong relationships because afterwards I'll find out they're still in touch and it's amazing. Yeah. It's really, and I think that also we're meant to meet the right people at the right time, even people going through the same journey and they become really like lifelong friends. Exactly. Exactly. Those people were meant to cross paths and to continue some journeys together. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. So if somebody's hearing this, is there like a word or a sentence or some kind of inspiring tip that you can provide somebody's going through it right now, going through the fertility journey and obviously going through the struggles that we all know are very real? Yes. So I think that my summary for today is you don't need to do this alone. Especially this week, I'm very sensitive to this because I've seen a lot of people who have chosen to do this on their own and just continue struggling on their own. And it totally breaks my heart. So in terms of your chances of success, in terms of how enjoyable this will be, in terms of your own journey and your own experience, don't you ever think you need to do this alone? You know, there's help out there that can make it so much better for you and uh, embrace it. Awesome. And so if people are hearing this and they want to find out more about you, how can they find you? Okay, so the two ways, easier ways to find me is my website, soniaribas.com, and my Instagram page, which is Sonia Ribas Coach. Awesome. So, Sonia, thank you so much for coming on. I have um, all your information on the episode notes if anybody wants to find it. 
And this is a great conversation. I love that you're really into empowering couples. And ultimately, I think that that is so needed in this world. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Michelle. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all of the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to share and leave a review. Reviews mean everything to podcasters, and I really enjoy hearing from my listeners. You can also find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com or email me at info at thewholesomelotus.com. I love hearing from my listeners. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com. I thank you so much for listening in and hope that you have a beautiful day.